Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith. So I'm, I'm continuing my uh, discussions on the, um, you know, how I, ba basically global dimming, how, you know, a good chunk of global dimming is being reduced by industry around the world shutting down um, to meet the coronavirus emergencies. And uh, so I gave some estimates in the last video of uh, how how quickly and and uh, you know how much the te the temperature can rise and it's a very fast effect. I mean aerosols in the lower atmosphere get rained out in about a week. So if you shutter industry very very quickly within about a week, your skies are a lot clearer, and uh, the daily temperature range can increase significantly. Uh, you know with nine eleven shuttering. Um, Airplanes for three days, uh, it was about a 1.1 degree increase in the daily temperature range. So daily highs, a half a degree warmer, daily lows, half a degree lower. So this, the spread between them was 1.1 degrees. And if you take global dimming to be about 0 0.5 degrees, the most accepted number, then shuttering, you know, half of the world's industry, you could uh, get a temperature rise of 0.25 Celsius globally. But over land, it would be more like um, uh, more like 0 0.5 degrees Celsius over land. And then if you add indirect effects from clouds, may, maybe up to a degree or so. Um, so how, can we see these numbers right now? So let's have a look at some of the uh, data. So um, Earth Null School is a very useful tool, as you know, and you can go and you can click on the earth and you can click particulates and I'm looking at you can do the particles I'm looking at SO4 here chemistry you can look at carbon monoxide SO2 uh, but basically the SO4 and uh, what I did is this is this is uh, March 19th 2020 and you can actually go in and change the, the 2020 to 2019 and reset you know copy the window change the 2020 to 2019 or you can go into the menu here and select this and select the date you know and change the date to what you like and then you can compare so this is 2020 and this is 2019 okay and uh you know some like it, it's really i mean you can see you know we got more spreading here it depends really on the circulation pattern it's carrying this gas around so it's very difficult to you know you can try to eyeball it and look for patterns um like there's in, in 2019 there was more intense regions here and here and then in 2020 um it was kind of you know well more intense regions here in 2020 i would say and in 2019 it's more spread out I mean, you can't really tell too much from that. You can look at Climate Reanalyzer and look at the uh, daily um, daily map, look at the two meter temperature anomaly, click on here and see the distribution of the hot and cold areas on the planet. Um, and look at the numbers down here, the summary of the numbers. I mean, the Northern Hemisphere, 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than normal, Arctic 3.1. So Arctic temperature amplification is about three. Um, and, uh, you know, so you can see def, but it's hard to know, you know, how much of these anomalies are just from the jet streams and the, you know, st standard warming. I mean, it's really, you're looking for a smaller signal in this. So it's really hard to tell, but, you know, if you have some ideas on, I, you know, apart from going into the detailed data, you know, for many months and doing a study and those things will appear soon. I'm just trying to get a ballpark, uh, number. Now, I've done a number of videos. This is my, my videos. If you just go to my YouTube channel, and then you see and click select videos, you can see all of the, the videos. And what I've done is, um, so I have talked about global dimming, and I'll show you some of those. Uh, but before that, I want to show you, this is a couple articles that are very good. I'd recommend you read, and I will do cover these articles in more detail but COVID-19 and the trade-off model of selection. It talks about mutations of the virus, how the virus, when it goes through some, it's mutating very, very fast. 
right? It gives you different strains of the virus. Some of the strains in, say, nursing homes seem to be very virulent, whereas some strains um, in less um, concentrated population, the virus seems to be, you know, more, it needs to have higher transmission, so the lethality is a bit a bit lower. There's a trade-off between lethality and uh, transmission rates. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, this virus kind of hits a sweet spot um, of both allowing it to spread and be such a big threat. You know, if a virus is much too deadly, then it kills the host before they can spread it that much. So that's a great article. And this article, this guy wrote an article, coronavirus, uh, what you need, you need to act now. Uh, if you last a few days ago, last week, and then this is a follow-up, the hammer and the dance. So I'll talk about this in detail, but before, you know, in, in some coming videos, but, you know, if you're really, it's really well worth reading. Um, and then when you watch my video on it, you'll have a better understanding. Now, if I go to my video channel and I search for global dimming, right, then it brings up, you know, this is a fairly recent video, the coronavirus effect on global warming, global warming impact on the pandemic. But then about three years ago, I did global dimming and global brightening, part one, part two, uh, black carbon aerosols cause global dimming, but overall warming. Okay, so I have a number of videos. So let's have a look at some of those. So this is global dimming and global brightening, part one. Um, and if you go through and have a look, so I talk about the, the Wikipedia um, stuff on global dimming and about how, you know, a bit about Pinatubo, um, you know, how when there's a volcanic uh, eruption, uh, then it puts a lot of particles in the atmosphere. Okay, so this is sunblocking aerosols, um, 1991, Pinatubo. A volcano put a lot of sulfur dioxide and particles in the atmosphere. These, this is the rise in aerosols jumped up, and because they're up in the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere, they don't get rained out, so it takes a few years for them to settle. So, 19, 1991 to 1993 into 1994, and there was a cooling of the planet globally of about half a degree from this injection of sulfur dioxide. This is how we know seeding the upper atmosphere with sulfur dioxide will, will um, reduce global temperature. So this is, you know, lots of satellite data for this volcano. This is El, Chich El Chichen, Chichen um, a Mexican volcano, also put up a lot of aerosols and caused a cooling um, for three or four years, but not as significant as Pinatubo. So I talked about those aerosol effects. Um, this is an important um, plot here. Let me just get my hand out of the way. So you can see the global temperatures going up, um, greenhouse gases up, solar, ozone, volcanic effects, and then sulfate. Sulfate is rising, and that so that's been increasing. So we get this global dimming phenomenon. The sulfate causes a cooling, but then sulfate turned over. We cleaned up the air over a lot of cities. So, that, so it became a bit of uh, brightening after that. So I discuss all of those things in that video. Um, and then there was a part two, global dimming and global brightening part two. Um, talked about, um, you know, just continued on the thread of the previous video. And this is an important figure. So I've talked a little bit about direct and indirect effects. You've got these aerosols, they scatter sunlight, some back up to space. The scattered light, the diffuse light goes and hits the earth. There's less direct sunlight on the earth. So that's an effect, the, you know, so the, the, because there's less light, light reaching the earth overall, there's, that's the global dimming effect, direct effect. But these particles also act as cloud condensation nuclei. So there's more particles, there's more clouds. And if there's clouds, they block some sunlight. Um, and there's also, so this is an in, indirect effect cloud albedo effect, you know, more particles, more clouds, the Tuomi effect, it's also called. And then there's some other effects here, like the cloud, increased cloud height um, can change things. Um, the cloud lifetime, you know, if there's more particles and there's more clouds and the clouds can live longer because they can reform as they evaporate from the sun, right? They dissipate. Um, so that's an effect that the cloud lifetime can change. So there's all of these indirect 
effects, which I point out in detail in this video. And then, of course, these are the forcings. So this is from the IPCC. Um, the total direct plus indirect radiative forcing due to these aerosols can range from minus 0.4 to 2.7 watts per square meter, most likely value of minus 1.2 watts per square meter. And you can see the uh, cloud adjustments. These, this is the aerosols and the precursors, the direct effect. Um, so the forcing here, minus 0 0.27. And then cloud adjustments, also negative. Right, and you albedo change due to land use, changes in solar irradiance. So those are, but these are the albedo effects, the direct and indirect effects. So they cause the uh, global dimming phenomena. Okay, so, um, and we can go on here. Those are the key things here. Oh, you can see sulfate emissions increasing over time up until, up until the 80s and 90s. And then, so this is, this this is causing blocking more and more sunlight and then slowly tapering off a little bit. So less sulfates, uh, global brightening here, global dimming here. And uh, okay, so there's lots of stuff there. And then um, this is another video um, where I talked about the coronavirus effect on global warming, global warming impact on pandemic risk. So I talked about the coronavirus effect is that it reduces the dimming, causing warming, and of course, global warming makes the the, the risk of these pandemics uh, higher. And that was a part one, and there was a part two, and a part three you can have a look at, okay? So this is, uh, the, the names were different. So this one, part two is coronavirus and climate change, intimate connections, part two of three, and then this was the increased risk um, part part three, okay, talks about more poleward animal migration, increasing the risk of the, of the next generation, um, of, of new virus generation, rather. Now, the other, I'll talk about this in, in a third video. This is Scientist Warning, uh, some good details on global dimming, and it's very well written, and I think I'll talk about it in detail, but I'll leave that to the next video. Um, well, actually, I'll start talking about it a little bit. Um, global dimming has devastating effects on the Earth's environment and living beings. The pollutants causing global dimming also lead to acid rain, smog, and respiratory diseases in humans. Okay, so respiratory diseases, air pollution. So let's have a look, look at air pollution a bit. First of all, this paper is referenced in this, in, and it talks about the cooling by aerosols. You know, there's still uncertainty, but the range is less. So the rain, you know, it shows the sulfur uh, dioxide, and it estimates that the the range of uncertainty from aerosol forcing is between minus 0 0.3 and minus 1.0 watts per meter squared which is a reduction of the uncertainty range relative to the um, uh, intergovernmental panel on, cl on climate change, um, AR5, report five. So a key thing is, you know, you can get satellite stuff if you just Google real-time global aerosol monitors. You can go to these sites and you can look at some of the... Um, monitoring, uh, you know, some of the, the data from the satellites. Okay, lots of stuff there. Um, but, you know, one of the key things I said is that air pollution here, if you just Google yearly death rate from air pollution, let's go to the top. Um, this, the World Health Organization estimates 4.6 million people die each year from causes directly attributable to air pollution. Many of these mortalities are indoor air pollution, so cooking inside. Um, and if you go down, um, it talks about 3.4 pe million people from in outdoor air pollution. And, uh, you know, it talks indoor air pollution, outdoor pollution. Um, but the, some of the numbers here, um, you know, uh, here it says uh, air pollution from the World Health Organization. Other report, it says about 7 million premature deaths each year from air pollution. 
So, you know, one of the things is the virus is greatly shuttering industry, which is greatly reducing air pollution. And as I mentioned in the previous video, um, you know, maybe half of those mortalities from air pollution will decrease. Okay, thanks for listening, and I'll continue in one last video. Thanks again.